As I begin to think about my final months at Wesley Mission, I've been drawn to think about words that matter. And in this series, I'm now turning to the word guidance. And I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 30, verses 18 through to 21. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he'll rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. People of Zion, who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more, and your own eyes you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I thought I'd look back at my own life and share with you something of my own journey. It begins uh, from outside of the church to inside through what was known as a youth club in the 1960s. It was very much a, a part of the scene in which I was uh, very much a part of a young person. And I found Christ through the witness of a youth club. The youth club was the place where the best girls went, where the best sport was played, so we all went. But I found Christ, and that was so important to me. I was thrown out of the youth club many, many times. In fact, I can remember being thrown out and a youth leader saying to me, make sure you come back next week, which I thought was the right approach, really. And in that youth club, I learned so many things from people of quality whose witness and response was real. Eventually, I, I, I was to go to Cliff College in Derbyshire, which was an evangelism college. It was very much, a, 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 again, a point of guidance. I was going to go into to teaching, teaching people with educational challenges and difficulties. But God somehow turned my life around and guided me in another way. And I went there for, originally for one year, but I was invited to say a second year to be given specific training in evangelism. That was so important. And in ministry and evangelism, I felt various calls upon my life, but always the call of the Holy Spirit to do what, what I believed is God's calling for me. At every point, it seems as though God has been there. And as we read in those words from Isaiah, there was a voice behind me telling me, this is the way to go. Walk in it. Do the things that you believe that God has called you to do. And on this show down the years, we've listened to people who've got a calling, something specific to their lives. And it would never have happened in many cases if they had not been re ready and responsive to the call. But then there's the call to ministry in different places, in Plymouth and the North East and then North Wales, and then becoming a chair of district, a bit like a bishop over a large area of the Northwest of England. Till eventually the call came to come to Sydney. It came in the most unusual of ways. I'd been out here uh, to, to see Carol's uh, uh, brothers that lived out here and, and to see the work of God out in Australia. And when I went back to Britain, they said, what was Australia like? I said, it was good, could never live there. The truth was that I wasn't going to be so. I wasn't going to be allowed to get away with that. And God put his hand upon me and we were one day in, the, in, in, a, in a Caribbean island, well, really a Bahamian island called Eleuthera. And uh, we used to go on, because this is the old days, remember, uh, not everybody had internet access everywhere. There was just one internet access on that central part of Eleuthera, and it was in the local library. And I went down, and, and Carol went on to it. It took about three years to get on. You know what it was like in those days. And I walked up the other end, and I said to Carol, is there any mail that I really ought to see? And she said, I think there's a letter here you should read. And it came from the Wesley Mission in Australia and said on it, we are currently looking for a new superintendent and CEO and uh, we're interviewing people and looking at people. We'd like you to apply. And I knew that was a big step. So for two years, two, two days, we never slept because we knew the calling was very real for that which was going to happen in our lives. 
so the truth was it was a guidance again. We knew that we'd have to leave family and friends and all the place that we'd been since being in Australia. We, my wife has lost both her parents and I've lost my mum. Uh, so the cost has been very real. And we knew it would involve that kind of cost. That's the tyranny of distance, as one of our old Australian writers uh, put it. But I, I did respond because I believe God was in it. And when God's got his hand upon your life and he's shown you a way, you've really got to go that way. The Old Testament truth is of the children of Israel and how the Lord went before them by, by day in a pillar of cloud and night by a, a pillar of fire. But, you know, if there's a psalm and a verse that really is important on this theme, it has to be Psalm 119, very long psalm, incidentally, if you have the time to read, but this, it's worth it for one verse. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. May God guide you as he guided me at the various stages of my life. God is a great God, a gracious God, and a God of guidance.